This presentation is a summary of work that has been completed on the obelisk deposit in the North Patterson origin. The Patterson origin is located in the northern part of Western Australia. It's located along the boundary of the Pilbara Craton and towards the northeast of the, the Yulgarn Craton. Obelisk is located in the northern part of the or origin. GSW's goals are to support and promote, promote mineral exploration in the Patterson origin. And to do this, we arranged a collaborative research agreement with CEPA Resources. And the agreement was to scan drill holes through the obelisk deposit, PND001 to 004. The work was funded by GSWA, provided that all data were to be publicly released. And it included the donation of one drill hole, which is number drill hole number two. A fifth drill hole, PND005, was drilled earlier part of the exploration incentive scheme. And both drill holes are presently stored at the Perth Core Library. Obelisk is a, a gold copper tungsten target. It's hosted by metamorphosed protozoic basement rocks, which are overlain by phanerozoic rocks or the Canning Basin. And these basin sediments are draped by quaternary sand dunes. And the depth to metamorphosed basement is 70 to 150 metres in the obelisk area. The local geology is interpreted from geophysical data and it's interpreted to include metasedimentary rocks, granites, dolerite, and gabbros. And the metamorphic grade of the rocks at obelisk are amphibolite facies. On the left-hand side is a simplified diagram of one drill hole, PND002. It shows the distribution of rock types. The earliest rock type is metasedimentary rocks, which are metasamite, and in blue, and metapelite in yellow. And they're shown in the photos on the right-hand side. The metasamite has a granular texture, whereas the metapelite contains more micas and is, has a schistose texture with round porphyroblast or cordierite. The metasedimentary rocks have been intruded by metagabro in green. And this photograph shows the equigranular metagabro, but also an unusual part of this rock, which is a leucosome, and this is zircon-rich. These rocks are variably mineralized, and they are cut by two post-mineralization dikes. The earliest one is a peroxime dolerite in purple, and the second one is a granitic pegmatite, shown on the right-hand side. I also indicate which rocks have been sampled for geochronology. And they include post-mineralization rocks and pre-mineralization rocks. The metamorphic facies is probably amphibolite facies, and that's determined from the presence of cordierite in the metapelite and garnets. And these porphyroblasts are wrapped by micas. Both the metasamite and the metagabro are also metamorphosed to amphibolite facies, whereas it's a bit unclear at this stage whether the, the dolerite and pegmatites are metamorphosed. Thin section work will resolve that question. The metasedimentary rocks and metagabro are altered. And in this diagram here, I show the results of the spectral scanning with the Hylogger the shortwave infrared data and the minerals that are interpreted, and the thermal infrared minerals with their legends down the bottom. And I show in a qualitative sense the distribution of alter, altered rocks. The earliest alteration phase is a higher temperature, and that's really defined by the presence of biotite quartz alteration with sulfides in the metasamite and metagabro. This is a photograph of the metasamite, and that's the photograph of the, the gabbro, and you can see the disseminated pyrite and pyrotite in these rocks. The mineralization is located along the contact between the metasedimentary rocks and the gabbro, and it's structurally controlled with extensional and shear gray quartz veins occurring where the disseminated alteration is. And the alteration replaces the pervasive fabric in the, in the area. A second generation of alteration 
over prints the earlier hotter temperature one. And the second one is defined by chlorite and sulfides. And these are semi-massive sulfides shown in the photographs here. Piercement textures cutting the war rock and where they interact with the earlier quartz veins, they cause the, the local replacement or granulation of the quartz veins. The timing of the, the dikes are shown in these photographs here. In the first one, it clearly shows the later timing of the granitic pegmatite, which cuts this darker peroxine dolerite. The peroxine dolerite is post-mineralization because it cuts mineralized and altered metasedimentary and metagabro war rocks. And the pegmatites are clearly post-mineralization because you can see how a quartz rich vein is cut by the, the pegmatite. And these post-mineralization dikes cut alteration in the pervasive fabric, but locally you can see folding of the pegmatite. And this indicates that there's a, a second folding event with local development of an axial plane of foliation in the pegmatite. Summarized here in this sketch, um, the first event is the formation of the metasedimentary rocks in blue, which are intruded by the, the, the gabbro. Forwarding of this contact and these rocks formed a pervasive foliation, which is the SN, and that dips deeply to the southwest. Quartz, mineralized quartz veins occur within both rock types as, as shear veins. Dolerite dikes cut the um, gabbro and sedimentary rocks, and they are in turn cut by the pegmatite. Later folding resulted in, in folding of all these rock types, including the shear veins. Further work at Obelisk includes interpretation of thin sections, both of proliths and alteration rock uh, alteration zones, uh, plus interpretation of whole rock geochemical data, so I can characterize the least altered rocks and compare them with their altered variants. And lastly, geochronology based on dating the pre-mineralized pre rocks, the post-mineralized rocks, and also dating mineralization directly through libsonite or xenotime and monazite associated with ore zones. Further work elsewhere in the Patterson includes looking at the Citadel deposit, the Venus deposit located to the north of Obelisk, and looking at other examples throughout the origin. We're interested in the Protolis, their age and their chemistry, signs of mineralization to be used as pathfinders for, exp for exploration. On the right hand side here are some of the, uh, the drill holes that we are interested in, colored by the level of scanning with a hologer. The red dots indicate they are diamond drill holes that have not been scanned. The yellow ones indicate holes that have been scanned to level one processing, whereas the purple have been scanned to a high level of interpretation. Lastly, if you want more information, you may go to GeoView. You can see these five drill holes spatially. If you click on one of them, a pop-up will occur and you'll have the chance to download the spectral data and also some of these Harlogger records. And on the right-hand side is an example of one of these records. If you want more information, please get in, in touch with me. Otherwise, I uh, acknowledge the sponsorship uh, in collaboration with SEPA Resources, Peter Newmeyer and Linda Burnett in, in particular. And uh, thank you for listening.